There's a lot of discussion of late of the knowledge economy. And within that context, we can think about information goods becoming increasingly important in our modern societies. Now, information goods are not a new thing. For centuries, people have paid doctors for medical advice, for example. And this is based on that inherent information symmetry that was spoken about at an earlier point in the class. That uh, we have specialists, mastery of a specialist field of knowledge, and we as uh, collectively as societies benefit from increasing specialization as the field of human knowledge has grown so much larger we can't help but be specialists. So by specialists interacting with each other through market mechanism, uh, we overall can increase uh, human welfare. I think we understand that quite well. But when we talk about information goods, it's when information is increasingly embodied in the products and the services we experience. It's become very difficult to draw a line between the hard and the soft these days in terms of hardware and software. I'm talking to a, um, to a Nikon camera right now. Of course, Nikon has been for many decades uh, making very precise, very high quality camera equipment. But in the last couple of decades, with the rise of digital photography, of course, it uh, increasingly makes software or contracts for software. I don't really know how they go about doing that, but um, I imagine they've got some pretty smart people in-house that are working on it, along with some, some people outside. I'm sure there's some buy and some make. But very much the interface on a digital camera is a knowledge-based resource. It's an informational resource. Now, there are no particular unique business challenges uh, for this kind of information good, particularly in terms of winning customer confidence, because you know one can play with the product in the store before you buy it, just, just like an analog camera with a digital camera, you can, you can try it out, you can try the menus, you can see whether you like the interface or not. Similarly, if you go into an Apple store and you pick up and you MacBook Pro or whatever, or MacBook Air, feel the weight, you know, experience it tacti tactilely, but then put it down, open it up, and of course you experience the software interface. So it's not because they are knowledge intensive, and indeed manufactured products are knowledge intensive too, but in a, in a, in a concrete, machined way, uh, and indeed craft as well is knowledge intensive, but, but also with an artisanal technique. But to go back to the computer example, for example, the knowledge is manifested in terms of an interface that you can try out before you buy. Where information goods become challenging from a consumer point of view, and therefore from a seller's point of view, is when it has a very strong experiential component when you can't really assess the quality of the embedded information uh, in the product until after you've experienced. You know, if we think in terms of doctors, in an extreme sense, you, know, you go to the doctor, you've got a headache, and uh, you ask for advice and the doctor says, nothing wrong with you, go home, have a good sleep, and then your headache eventually uh, um, gets worse and worse and worse and you think hmm maybe there is something wrong with me you get a second opinion you get a third opinion finally the third opinion says you better stick your MRI machine and you find you've got a, uh, a brain tumor for example you're not very happy with the first doctor are you so actually evaluating the quality of an informational service is inherently quite difficult because of that information asymmetry which led you to go to the provider in the first place so that's one reason why we have so much regulation of key providers of information services. Yeah, doctors, of course, must be educated in a recognized institution. They must sit and pass a range of exams. They have practicum. And there's normally a professional body made up of other doctors uh, who can evaluate the uh, professional competencies of anyone providing providing this effectively information good uh, based on a deep information asymmetry and which makes it extremely difficult for the customers to evaluate the quality of the service the provider in advance or even in the immediate um, uh, aftermath of the service 
Longer term, of course, whether the doctor gave you good or bad advice becomes abundantly clear to you depending on what happens uh, with your health. Many straight experience goods that we don't necessarily need to talk uh, in terms of information goods, things like going to a restaurant, whether it's going to be a good dining experience or not, have the similar kind of problems to information goods. Anything that is an experience good has this inherent problem that you're not quite sure what you're going to get. Uh, this can include buying a holiday. Uh, so going to a destination you don't know anything about, you have some hopes for, but you're not sure that it's going to live up to your hopes, your expectations. So we've seen very significant secondary markets for information arising to overcome these problems. So this is the rise of the review, for example. I think we all understand this. Uh, the, re the reviewer, the professional reviewer too. And so many of the, uh, the platforms, and we've talked about facilitation in, a, in another mini module here, many of the platforms that, that facilitate connections between buyers and sellers overcome this basic information or goods function by building into it uh, a collective review function. So we see that, yes, there are inherent uh, difficulties in selling any good or service, service which is predicated on either an information asymmetry or a temporal problem, a timing problem. It's an experience good and that you can't assess the product uh, until after you've actually paid for it and experienced it. So we can see that there are inherent difficulties in winning customer confidence to commit to buying a product or service that, that are of these types. However, markets uh, do seem to function quite well in incentivizing creative responses. Uh, individuals who set themselves up as reviewers and maintain a reputation for independent and forthright uh, opinions on what is good and bad are uh, hugely valuable in terms of winning customer confidence uh, to buy particular products.